promised I wanted to show my sled deck to you all. Um, if you come closer. You see it works on a cantilever style design. You have four um, crown threaded caster wheels running down three inch C channel. Crossing that is two by one 16 gauge uh, steel along with the glides. And you can see it just slides fairly easy and then it pivots up and down. First thing I do is I move my locking pin into position one where I can pull this out, take it out. Or I can pull it out, pull it away. It only weighs about maybe 80 pounds. Drop it down. Now you're ready to ride your sled up. race up or hit anything Move out of the way. as you can see I, I didn't have to race up or hit the the ramp very fast you can go nice and slow the paddles dig into the cross beams fairly well so one of for my safety I put in a super clamp tighten down the front gaps now the next thing to do is back the truck up to hit the midpoint and that will where, where the design will act like a cantilever and you'll be able to lift it up so Put your pin in the position. Take your second pin, come closer, and you put it in front of the other wheel so that when I pull the bottom up, it won't it won't slide down on me. So I just lift it and 50, 60 pounds, give or take. Pull out your front pin, pull out the back pin, push it in place, place your back pin here, that's designed to keep your sled from sliding out. As you can see, come closer, it's now locked in place and it's, and it's pretty much good to go. You could throw a tie strap around the back end. Put some flagging tape on the back because this sticks out about 42 inches. It's a six and a half foot bed. If you had a proper size bed, it wouldn't stick out so much. Plus this is a mountain sled, so it's 163 uh, inch track. So it's quite long, but from a legal standpoint, you're good. It's within your brake lights, so you don't have to add new lights or anything like that. On the bottom here, I installed a half inch piece of Teflon and there's twofold reasons for this. The first, it protects the steel from the ground. And the other thing is this sharp edge actually bites into the snow. So when you're backing up, uh, the, the whole assembly doesn't try to kick out while you're backing up. And if you get closer to it, you can see it's just a simple two by two coming out of the receiver hitch with a little bit of a gosset to strengthen it up. And then the back here, you got some six inch uh, bullet hinges with some grease. Uh, that helps it flip around and then these cross beams here I used a little bit thicker steel and I used a, uh, a two, two inch um, bolt that I welded in place and then ground down so when the, the caster wheel slides into place um, it has a place to go. This bolt here is welded in place so you can tighten the wheel and this one with the locking nut just locks it in place as you can see it just glides down it works pretty good and then taking it off it's pretty straightforward you just pull your pin here slide the whole thing out till you hit the top locking pin tilt it on its side 
pretty much the exact opposite of what you see when uh, when you saw me put it on. One thing I forgot to mention too is on the end of the unit I have two caster wheels fixed in a fixed position that help glide it along the front as well as you can see that beam that comes across here it's actually uh, has a nut welded on the end and then the bolt goes through the C-channel to hold it in place so this allows you to pull it all the way out with the whole unit from popping out as well as it uh, uh, can be removed easily so when you're ready to remove the whole uh, setup it's pretty simple. In all, for weight wise, the top part probably weighs 120 pounds give or take. Um, if I were to do it again I guess I could have reduced this down to a one by one. Uh, however I do like the, the longer gauge, uh, the longer length so my paddles can grab onto it and it's easy to walk up. And uh, the three inch channel that's probably the heaviest part of your whole unit and uh, on the end you'll see in other videos where someone just welded on some flat strap uh, one thing I ended up doing which took a lot more work but it, one it looks nicer and second it knocked about 26 pounds off the whole thing instead of using that flat strap and the glides you can just pick up on Amazon just tap your holes and uh, drill them in place make sure you leave some uh, extra length in the, the holes so the thing can move around because the heat expansion gets to move quite a bit. The bottom receiver thing maybe weighs 30 pounds. Again I used a heavier gauge steel than the 16 gauge of the rest of the system because that's where the most of the weight's going to be uh, on. Uh, other videos showed a cross beam coming across here going from one end of the bed to the other and then connecting through here. I found that it was a bit of overkill. Yes, there's some rock to it, but in all reality, receiver hitch is the heaviest, the strongest designed part of your truck to hold the weight. And uh, if you just tie strap down from here to there, uh, well, for long distance traveling, it locks it in place pretty good. You could drill a hole on the other side of the C-channel and put a second locking pin. It's probably something I'm gonna do, I just haven't got around to yet. But all in all, it's a pretty solid unit. And as you can see, it's really easy to put together uh, and, and it's, uh, load up by yourself. It's, uh, it's definitely a one-man operation. Okay, bye.